hello guys welcome back to mr deep coding channel now this is episode 13 of our chemium social media app series and in this episode we'll be implementing the ability to add to delete and to retrieve comments from a post so without further ado let's get started all right so let's first create the post comments table and for that expand DAO package and from here we need to create a new package that we will call post comment now inside this post comment, let's create post comment table, a new Kotlin file that we will call post comment table, select file and hit enter. All right. And now from here, we need a new Kotlin object, post comment table that extends table from exposed. We can give our table a name and it will be called post comments. In here, we need the comment ID and this should be unique. Then we need to know from which post this comment was made. So uh, this column will be named post ID and to this comment, we need to put a constraint and this constraint just says that whenever this post is deleted, we also need to remove its comment. Okay. Then after that, we also need the user ID, the user who made the comment. And to this column, we are also going to put the same constraint that says if this user is removed from the database, then we need to remove also this comment. Then we need the actual content of the comment. Now this is going to be a var car. We put the length to be 200, uh, 300. And lastly, we will catch the created date. And the default value is current date time. All right. So after defining this post comments table, we need now to define a data class that will model what we want from our database whenever we query a comment or a list of comments. So from here, we can create a new data class that we will call post comment row. Now for this post comment row, we're going to have a, this attribute. We'll have the comment ID, the content of the comment, the post, the user who made the comment, the username and the image URL from that user and also the created date of this comment. Now these two extra attributes will come from the user table because we're going to join that to the post comments table whenever we query a comment or a list of comments. All right. So after this post comment row, we need to add the post comments table to our database factory for that. Open it and to the list of table, we need to add this post comments table. Okay, so after the post comment table, we need a data access object. All right, and now for our post comment DAO, let's go one more time inside post comment package. And from here, we need to create a new interface that we are going to name as post comment DAO. This interface will have a couple of methods. The first one is to add a new comment. Now this method will take the post ID, the user who need to make the comment and the actual content of the comment. Now this is going to return a post comment row, analable post comment row. The second method will be to remove a comment. So to remove a comment, we'll need the comment ID and also the post ID. And this is going to return a Boolean. The third method will be to find a comment. And for that, we also need the comment ID and the post ID. And this is going to return a comment, a post comment row. And lastly, we'll have a method to get comments from a post and for that we'll need the post id and since we'll do some pagination we also need a page number that is going to be an integer and the page size and this is going to return a list of post comment row all right so next we need to create an implementation for this post comment at our interface and from here we need you need to select all the methods and click ok let's first start implementing this find comment and as always we need uh, the DB query to execute our statement inside the database transaction. Let's import a DB query. All right. So from here, we need to call post comment table and we are going to join the user table. So the other table will be our user table and we are going to make a Nini join from the user ID column of the post comment table. So after joining, we need to select where post comment table dot post id equals the post id import this and post comment table dot comment id equals the comment id that was passed after that we need to call single or null and if we get a non null result row we are going to convert that to post comment row and for that we will create this to post comment row method in a moment to which we're going to pass the result row all right, and let's quickly create this to post comment row. So right below get comments, we can create a new private method that we're going to call to post comment row. This is going to take result row. 
and it's going to return a post comment row okay so let's add space and from here we need to return a new post comment row and we're also getting this name and image URL from the user table because at this result row we'll have um the two table joined all right so yeah i think we are done with find comment now we can implement add comment so here we need again db query and from here we are first of all going to generate a comment id then we need to call post comment table insert all right so we need to insert the comment id the post id the user id and the content the date will be automatically created whenever we insert a new comment so after inserting a new comment we need to return a post comment row and for that we can call find comment to which we're going to pass the comment and the post id all right so next let's implement the remove comment method and as usual let's call a db query and from here we need post comment table dot delete where so we will delete where post table dot comment id equals comment id and post table dot post id equals post id we need to make sure that this is greater than zero that means the number of removed row is greater than zero all right we have the cat comment method and for that let's call again db query all right so from here again post comment table to which we're going to join the user table then we need to select so we will select where the post id equals this post id we need to order by created date descending and from here we will set the limit to be the page size and for the offset so we're going to calculate page size minus one time um, page number minus one times the page size and convert that to long lastly we need to map result row to post comment row all right so i think that's all for post comment thou implementation after post comment thou implementation we're going to create a repository and for that expand the repository package and let's first create a new package so we will name this as post comment now inside this post comment package we will create post comment repository now for this post comment repository interface we are going to have first of all add comment method and this text in a param called new comment params and it's going to return a response of type comment response now we'll create uh, these classes in a moment then we have another method called remove comment this is going to take also parameter and this time we call it remove comment params and it returns a response of type comment response we're going to add a third method that we will call get post comment now this is going to take a post id a page number and a page size so it will return a response of type get comment response all right so now let's expand the model package and create a new kotlin file that we will name as post comment now inside of this file we're going to create all the models that we have here so first of all we need a data class and that's we're going to call a new comment params we will have three parameters for this class we have content post id and user id the second model we need is called remove comment param now this class will have the post id the comment id and the user id then for the next model called post comment we are going to have the comment id the content the post id the user id the username the user image url and the created date after that we're going to need another model that we call comment response now for comment response we have success comment and message and uh, lastly a model to return uh, a list of comments so this is called a get comment response and this has success the list of comment and a message all right so now back inside post comment repository and we need to import these classes great next we also need to create an implementation for this interface so let's do that quickly select all the method and click ok now for post comment repository implementation we will need to provide the comment DAO and also the post DAO. so import comment DAO and post DAO. now uh, let's implement the add comment from here we first of all need to have a post comment row 
that will come from comments that add comment to which we're going to pass the post id from params.post id the user id also from params.user id the content again params.content we will return by checking first of all if post comment row equals null that means we couldn't insert the comment so from here we're going to return an error select error from our response class now the code for this error is going to be conflict and for the data we are going to pass a new comment response success is false and the message says that could not insert the comment in the database else if we inserted that comment in the database so from here not only we need to return response.success but before that we want to increment the number of comment counts in the post table let's quickly open post DAO. so from here you can see that we don't have any method to increment or decrement the number of post comment counts or the number of post comments i mean post likes count so let's quickly add two methods that we will provide also the implementation for and first of all we're going to have this method called update likes count now for this we need the post id and we also need to know if we are actually decrementing the number of likes and we'll have this decrement boolean that will have a default value of false and this method will return a boolean the second method we need is to update the comment count again we need the post id and a boolean that tells us if we are incrementing or decrementing so we'll call that as decrement and the default value is also false great now let's provide implementation for this newly added method so open post our implementation okay we can now update the number of like and also the number of comments all right so to update the number of comment we first of all as usual need a db query then we're going to define this value for which we're going to check if it's decrementing then we need to pass negative one else we're going to pass one then after that we need to call post table dot update now we are going to update where post table dot post id equals the post id that was passed now from here we need to call each dot update so we're going to update a single column and the column is going to be comment count and the new value will be comment count plus the value so we will do the same for a likes count so let's just copy this and from here we are not decrementing the comment count but i mean incrementing or decrementing so likes count dot plus value we need to make sure that this is greater than zero all right so after this we can close post our implementation then come back inside post comment repository implementation now here we need to call post dot update comment count and for the post id we're going to pass params dot post id and then we need to return response dot success and for the data we're going to pass a new comment response success is true and for the comment we need to create a this to post comment method that should convert from post comment row to post comment so let's quickly create a this method now this takes in a comment row post comment row and return a post comment so let add space in here we need to return a new comment all right so we are done with add comment next we need to implement remove comment now to remove a new comment we first of all need to check if the comment still exists in our database so for that we will declare this comment row variable and we will call comment dot find comment and we're going to pass the comment id and the post id we're going to return if comment row equals null that mean that means that the comment doesn't exist in our database in that case we're going to return an error response and the code for this is going to be not found and for the data we're going to pass a new comment response success is false and the message says that the comment with this comment id was not found else if the comment exists in our database then we need to declare another variable that we call post owner id for which we're going to call post dot get post then user id after obtaining this post owner id so we need to check if the user that wants to remove this comment has the right permission so let's check if params dot user id the user who wants to remove the comment 
equals comment row dot user id so we don't need to check if it equals we need to check if that's not equal to the user who made the comment and also we need to check if params dot user id is different from the post owner id so if user id fails to be either the user who made the comment or the owner of the post then we need to tell the client that this user doesn't have the permission to remove uh, this comment so we're going to return response error for the http code we are going to choose forbidden and for the data we need to pass a new comment response success is false and the message says that this user with this id cannot delete uh, this comment so if the user has the permission to remove the comment then we need to remove the comment from the comments table and also uh, decrement the number of comments count so first of all we will have this comment was removed and for that we need to call comment dot remove comment we pass at the comment id and also the post id we need to check if the comment was removed so in that case we need to update the number of comments count by passing the post id and also at this time decrement is set to true and after that we need to return response success so if for any other reason the comment couldn't be removed from the comments table then we need to respond with an error message so we'll have this response.error for the http code we'll pass conflict and for the data we're going to pass a new comment response the comment uh, i mean the message says that uh, the comment could not be removed so the user has to try again then uh, lastly we need to implement get post comment so a get post comment will be pretty simple we first of all need a variable now to get at the comment rows so we're going to call comment dot get comment by passing in the post id the page number and the page size after getting the comment rows we need to map them to comment so for that we're going to call comment rows map and we need to pass to post comment and after mapping a comment rows to comment we need to return a response a success and for the data, we are going to pass a get comments response success is true. And we pass in here the list of comments. We need to call a return because we need to return at this response.success. All right, so I think we are done with post comments repository implementation. Next, we need a route to handle the incoming request. And let's go and expand the route package. And from here, we need to create a new Kotlin file that we are going to name as post comment route so here we need an extension to routing from Kator so we need a new extension method routing that we name as post comment routing we are going to inject the repository so post comment repository right after that we need to call authenticate block and inside this authenticate block we need a new route for which the path is going to be uh, forward slash post then forward slash comments so to create a new comment we need an http post method and the path is going to be forward slash create first of all we need to receive parameters and for that call a dot receive nullable and here we need to receive an instance of new comment params then we need to check if params equals null in that case we need to respond with a bad request so call.respond, the status is going to be a bad request. And for the message, we're going to pass a new comment response that says could not pass on the comment parameters. Then we need to return from post. So if the transformation was successful, then we'll reach this point. So let's now define a new variable called result and we'll call repository.addComment. For the parameters, we're going to pass params. Then we can respond, call.respond. For the status, we're going to pass result dot code and for the message we will pass result and dot data now if for any reason there there is an error so if there was an error then we need to respond with an internal server error so that's it for creating a new comment right below this post method we need another method this is this one is going to be a delete or the path we're going to pass forward slash delete it's pretty much similar to creating a new comment so i will paste the code and explain so first of all we receive the parameter this time it's remove comment params then we check if params equals null in that case we need to respond with a bad request and return from delete 
And then we're getting a result from repository. We respond based on what we get from the repository. And then for any exception that can be thrown, we're going to catch that and respond with an internal server error. So and that's it also for the delete. All right, so the last method is to get a list of comment. So we have a get HTTP method for which we need to pass post ID. And from here, we can get the post ID parameter by calling call.getLongParameter. We created this extension in one of our previous videos. Then we will get query parameters for the page and the limit. And we'll set the default limit to be the default page size that we created inside constant.kt. After that, we'll define a resort variable and call repository.getComment, passing in the post ID, the page, and the limit. After that, we need to respond, so call.respond. The status is going to be resort.code. And for the message, we're going to pass result.data. Now we need a try catch, so cut this. All right, so next we need to add this post comment routing. So expand plugin and open routing.kt. We need to pass post routing here, import that extension function. And after that, we need to provide the repository and the DAO to app module. So open app module.kt. And here we need to pass post comment DAO and post comment repository. Okay guys, now before we run and test our application, you need to add the serializable annotation to all the models that we created inside postcomment.kt. So you need to add this annotation uh, serializable to all the models. Okay guys, now one more thing before we run and test our application. So while I was trying to work with Postman, I've come across an issue and we need to fix that. If you come inside post comment at our implementation class, you can see that we are making use of this find comment method. And at this find comment method also call this a DB query, which returns a new transaction inside this already created transaction. This is causing the find comment method to return null instead of returning post comment row, even though the comment ID and the post ID match what we have inside the database. So the fix for this is to simply copy this statement uh, that we have from find comment, replace this find comment code. All right, and now we can run and test our application. All right, guys, now to test our APIs, we will use Eric's account. So first of all, let's copy the ID of Eric's. Now, as you can see, I have created three new requests. The first one is this create comment request, and we also have delete comment request. And lastly, a get post comment request. First of all, before we add any comment, we need a post. And for that, we're going to make use of Eric's to create a new post. So we will paste the ID of Eric. So Eric is creating a new post and let's hit send. So there we go. Uh, Eric's have created this post. We can now use a get user post request to get the ID of the post that Eric just created. Now this is the post ID. We can copy that and now come inside create comment request and for the post id we are going to paste this new post id the user is still eric uh, this is the id of eric and he's adding a new comment the content is nice post love from brazil so we can now hit send okay so as you can see we are getting success true and the comment that was added by eric and the content of the comment is here we can change this uh, we can say for example keep posting love from the change from brazil to india okay so it's still on the same post id and it's still the same user so hit send now we are getting this new comment now if we want to see um these comments that were added to this post we can come to get post comment now first of all let's again copy the post id because we need to pass that as a parameter now, as you can see, we are getting our two comments. Now, the last API that we need to test is the delete comment request. So for that, we need to provide the comment ID and the post ID. So let's first pass the comment ID. We need to delete this comment from, where is the post? Copy also this post ID, and we need to pass that here. The user is still Eric. 
So now hit send. Now we're getting success true. We don't need any comments here. To verify that this was successful, we can go back inside, get comment post request. And for this time, we should get only one comment instead of two. So if we hit send again, and as you can see, we are now getting just one comment. All right, guys, now that's it for this comment feature. We'll stop here for this episode. And in the next episode, we are going to add and retrieve likes for a post. And until then, I will see you. Take care.